evening ladies and gents um will them that think that the board's not the issue wake up now will they will they wake up now Stendhal being sacked I'm fucking fuming and I repeat it this board are killing the football club all they wanted were a little bit of experience, a bit of help. And I'm sure the players would love a bit of help in this moment in time, the way that we've been playing, the performances we've been producing. Stendhal can't kick a fucking every ball for him. He's been given what he's been given to work with. They've sold his best assets from underneath him. And if he's been sacked, then that is disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. If he's walked, fair enough, and I understand that because he's been given nothing. But if it's a sacking, it is fucking disgraceful. I feel so sorry for him. I wish we'd never got promoted in a way. People don't realise that we wanted Marais out when results were going wrong, and they gave him confidence until the end of the season. Stendhal has been given a worse transfer window than Marais and Eki put together. All he wanted were a bit of experience. He didn't even probably want that. He just probably wanted a few lads that knew how to play fucking football. Like I said on Saturday, I feel sorry for the players, this predicament that they're in. Because this this might even set them even worse. They might feel really guilty after this. They might think it's due to us that he's gone. It's due to our performances. It's due to our mistakes. They're probably all behind Stendhal. Do you know what I mean? It, The thing is, what I don't understand is with this board. Surely, as a business, if you invest money on quality, you get results back. Surely, if you re invest on things that are good, you get quality back, you get results back. And if you invest on good players, and they end up leaving in two or three years' time for double the figure, then that club, our club, would have been in a better position. And then surely players that are just as good as them players that would have left us would have been attracted because we'd have done better as a football club. Because they'd have seen that we'd have been in a better position. And the the club, I'm, what I'm saying is I'm not, this policy, I'm not fully 100% against it. But it can't be that if there's nobody under 25, we, we don't do nothing to do with them. All loans are the same. You've got to be flexible. There's opposition fans saying it. Our own fans are saying it. Even the media are saying it. Neil Meller of Talk Sports said it. People on Radio Sheffield are saying it. It's not just Barnsley fans that are emotionally involved and biased. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? You know, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. He didn't have to come to Barnsley. He could have stayed in Germany, but he wanted a challenge, and that was the mark of the man. He got us up to the Championship in his first full season with fuck all money to spend. With his players taking under him. Potts went in, the, in January. Bradshaw, he wanted to stay. He went in the summer, in the first few weeks of the season. You could see on the dress, on in, in the dressing room the confidence being sapped. And also even in the media interviews, Stendhal after the games, and even before the games. And, and he was saying the truth on Saturday. We're a kids team, and we are. And this is the board that's giving him that kids team. Nobody else, them. Why are they not responsible? You know... I'm fuming. I feel so sorry for him. We're 23rd in the league. Why have they not fucking supported him? Why are they so reluctant? They just see us as a business. Just as profit. Will not? Will you people that don't think that they don't see us as a profit wake up? Things will work out in three years time. Well, it's not working now, is it? It's not working now. We're, we're on course for a second relegation. In three seasons under him. Is that success? Is that things working out in three years time? I'm telling you. If we go down to League One. It'll be hard to come back up. Last year we got up. We were lucky. Sunderland and Pompey. Fucked up. The last few weeks of the season. Yeah we did fantastic to get up. But we had to rely on other teams. We scraped over the line. Other teams had games in hand. And if they won them games in hand. We'd have been in the playoffs. And who knows if we'd have gone up or not. But we did. We're here where we are. But just at least support the fucking person. 
At least support the lads. At least give them two or three players to work with. What do we always say? Quality over quantity. We've got 12 players in. Doesn't mean it's the best transfer window ever. Do you know what I mean? But yet in that, we lost as two main centre defenders. And people are going to say, well, they weren't that good anyway. I'm telling you now, they're better than what we've got at minute. We've got two strikers in the fucking football club. What what other championship football club do you know that's got two strikers? One that the head coach doesn't even rate. He probably didn't even have any say over the transfers. He's probably wanted one or two of them. He rated Wilkes because he said that on media reports. He rated Chaplin because he said that as well. He's brought Bear over because he worked with him last year. He probably rates three out of them 14 players. That's all I can say off the top of my head. Maybe more, I don't know. But if he's... If he's not involved in every single transfer, why is there a lack of communication? It's a professional football club. It's not an amateur football club. Where is the communication? Why are they not going to him and saying, who do you want? We'll, we'll equip you with what you want. They threw him under the bus. And I said this on Saturday. He is the sacrificial lamb and they're making him be the fallout, fallout person for what's going wrong. They're trying to put the blame on Stendhal and say it's the results, not what's happened in the summer. The results have been awful. Yeah, I get it. And some some of Stendhal's... So why he's played the likes of Civic Bear and Jordan Williams, I get it. But I'm not fully blaming him for the full situation. I said to you when, I, when, 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 when they came into the football club, the first appointment they got wrong, Jose Marais. They had, the second one was massive. They made a gamble with Stendhal, it worked. But this transfer policy hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. We've sold better players from our club. And replace them. You think if you're going to sell players, you replace them with quality that's like for like. You're going to reinvest every single penny. And we haven't. We haven't done that. We haven't at all. This two-week window was a perfect opportunity to bring players in. But they've seen it as an opportunity to get rid of the manager. And the, the, the fans will turn. I've already seen it on social media. The fans are in uproar. We were fully behind Stendhal. I wasn't even questioning Stendhal at Preston. I was questioning the players' commitment. Uh, but, the, but, but, but then again, I weren't because the players... But then I weren't questioning the players because they're so out of depth. What else can they do? They've come from the conference. League 1, League 2, foreign leagues. You know, likes of Mads Anderson. He's come from Horsens in Denmark. Surely if he was that good, one of the main Danish teams like Copenhagen had assigned him. Same goes for Diaby. And I think Diaby's an half-decent player. But what I'm saying is, if these teams from these leagues that we've got them from, Diaby, Beira... You know, Tiam when he first came over, I'm looking at Anderson, these lads that come in from foreign countries, if they were that good, the better teams in them leagues that they've come from would have signed them. But we've signed them. The scouting is all wrong. The the whole thing needs starting from needs sorting from top to bottom. The policy, we need to the spreadsheet, we can't be throwing coaches under the bus. And this is the thing when you get coaches in. They don't have an influence over signings. They get given who they're given. And if the if the if the players aren't even even if it's a load of shit, if the results aren't coming in, they don't see it like that. They just see it, the losing games get them out. We're twenty third in the league. They want they want to come across as ruthless, but they're doing it totally wrong, totally wrong. This isn't the this isn't the answer. The answer is supporting the manager, backing the manager. First bad run, first run of bad games since he's coming to the football club, and you get rid of him. You get rid of him. What about a bit of dignity? A bit of respect for the fucking lad? He's come over from Germany. He didn't have to come. Could have left in the summer. You know, all these rumours going around, he wanted to round his resignation in at Forest. And I wish he did because he'd have left with a bit of fucking respect. Rather than this being pushed out under a train, like he's been doing now, being made the sacrificial lamb. But the fans will fucking see through it, Conway. The fans fucking see through it. Nice wanted your art. And we will end up wanting your art. The way that you're going. You're not making a big impression on us. You never made a big impression on me. Picking my race to be the answer. We did a ne we needed an experienced English coach. And I gave you a second chance when you brought Stendhal in. And people are saying that the board got fucking the club up. No, they didn't. They sold his best fucking assets. And we still got up. And that was due to Stendhal and the players that were currently here. And then what do we do? The players that got us up, we sell fucking half the starting squad. We don't bring the players in to replace them. That isn't the fucking answer. This thing about best transfer window ever, I can't get it out of my head. 
and then he go and then they go and do this. Fucking Chien Lee comes to fucking how many games has he been to since he took over? I'd rather as fucking have fucking Patrick Crine over this board any day of the fucking week. Because with Patrick, we knew where we stood. He weren't the richest guy in the world, but we, we knew where he stood and we knew they were passionate about the football club and we knew that he cared because he had the club at art. And you know, we're not going to get every owner that's from the town all the time. I'm not going on about that. But you want owners that care. They don't just see us as a fucking business. They see us players as assets and acquisitions and little sales and stocks and shares. This club means more to a lot of people than this board will ever fucking know. This club kept this town going in the 80s and the 90s. And now, luckily enough there, when the club got into the Premier League, and to see where it is now, it's fucking disgusting. It's disgusting. And I want them out. Will the fans fucking wake up now? Will you wake up, all you that were fucking laughing Them at me? Them fans questioning why we're throwing me fucking teddy out the pram. Because I know the main intentions. They're here for fucking profit. They're here for profit. And we're going to end up like Blackpool, like Coventry, like Charlton have, like Blackburn, like Newcastle, like Bolton, like Berry. They're going to run us into the fucking ground. And when it fucking ends, watch this video back and think I should have listened to him. I'm not trying to say I'm the Messiah, but you can see fucking right through him. I'm a good judge of character. And when people are here for fucking wrong reasons, I'll call it out and say so. You can see fucking right through him. They're all in the media when it's going good and when it's going bad, the fuck off. And sit behind the fucking ivory towers and make fucking decisions like this. Do you not back the manager? Do you not give him a fucking chance? Do you not say to him, look, it's not working out. We know it's not working out. We know results aren't good enough, but we know the reason why. And we admit, we accept. And be the bigger fucking people. The consortium, if you watch this, bigger, be the bigger people and say, you know what, we didn't invest properly in the summer. We hold his hands up. That's all we want is honesty, is transparency. Where's the communication? There should have been a statement released soon after that Preston game, straight away saying, we don't accept this performance. We haven't funded Stendhal in the summer. We're going to help the players now over this two-week period. We're going to get some unattached players. We're going to put some money in. We're going to do something. Because January could be too fucking late. Who are we going to bring in now? Who's going to come to... What manager's going to come to want to come to us? There were League One managers turning us down before Stendhal came. Gareth Ainsworth at Wickham turned us down. Carl Robinson, at, who were at Charlton at the time, who was now at Oxford, turned us down. We can't even get managers of championship calibre in. We have to take gambles and go abroad and hope that they're a success. Because they know what it's all about. People have said Mick McCarthy, Mick McCarthy. Do you think... Like, do you know when when McCarthy didn't have the island job, do you think he'd want to come in here and have no influence over signings, no influence over transfers, have his hands tied? No, he wouldn't. Stendhal, he knew what the remit was when he came in. I get that. And he probably spoke about that in the, in the interview. But he didn't expect when he got him promoted automatically to lose all his best fucking players under his fucking, without his say-so. And yet it is a business decision. And yet they run this football club that surely the manager that trains them day in, day out has a fucking say in it. Surely he is a saying the transfers. It's fucking disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Will the people that think board in, will they wake up now? Is this the answer really? Get Stendhal out and fucking next person comes in and then they see the exact same results. The players aren't good enough at this level. That's not Stendhal's fault. It's not the players' fault. The players have been thrown under the bus. They've been given a massive amount of pressure and responsibility. And yet I call that bad performances. But at the end of the day, thinking about it now, it's not the players, it's the issue. It's the fucking board. You put in what you get. If you don't put money in, you don't get anything back. It's like banging your head against the wall all fucking time. And I just wish them people that think that fucking Conway and Lee and fucking Murphy have got our best interests at heart. The fucking haven't. You see consortiums coming to clubs. The Venkies at Blackburn. Dusha Tillet at Charlton. Mike, Mike Ashley at Newcastle. Do you think them owners came in and had the best interests of the club at heart? No. They put no money in. They get no money back. I just wish... We, I think... I, you know, I don't know what to do now. I'm in a mind of boycotting them and just going to away games. I've had enough of them. This is the final fucking straw for me. I'm going to give them till New Year. Give them this two-week two transfer period. Well, international break. 
maybe go into January if Stender was still here, give them a chance, give them a month to, to, to sort it out, for them to be honest, come out and sort it out behind the scenes, keep everyone here at the club, don't let no one leave that's in the first team 11 that's important to us, e.g. Morton Woodrow, no, not let none of the first teamers that I think they're a decent that could keep us up, keep them at the club and bring people in. Get rid of the deadwood like Tiam, like some players that are not good enough. I'm not going to go over. I'm not. It's not about the players. This, but get rid of the deadwood that shouldn't be here and bring players in that are good enough to keep us up and keep us st stable. Is this stability to you? Is this stability to you on and off the pitch, chopping and changing managers just because you, you due to your fucking decisions? You know, I'd, I'd take any day fucking finished in twentieth every year under Patrick Crime. I'd take fucking Keefill and David Flickcroft every day because Crime fucking supported him. He didn't have the money, but when he had the money, he gave him it. He brought experienced players in, McShane, Hamill, Kevin Long. There's others that I'm not, you know, not going to mention. He gave him, he gave managers longer than this. Fucking hell, he, you know what I mean? They gave him a race fucking till Derby. People saw before that it weren't working. Alienating players. Marais were fucking locking people out of his office. The players couldn't even see him. The players couldn't even go in and talk to him. Marais had nothing to do with him. He alienated Malin, Najmulna, Kavare, other players, Bradshaw, McCarthy, Pearson, Jackson. Is that acceptable to you? To a coach that you brought in that you didn't fucking sack until, it, until you had to, until you had to act. He were alienating players that were here at the club at the time. And then, and then the next manager that comes in that loves the club, that may as well be from fucking Barnsley. I bet he's fucking devastated. I bet he's devastated this has had to happen. He's a man of honour. And we respect that, Barnsley people. We respect that. We're hard-working people. And all we want is honest, hard-working people helping the football club out. We don't want Barcelona-type people in. People with egos, people thinking that they're better than they're not. We want honest, hard-working people that try their best. And are you trying your best? Take a fucking good look at yourself in the mirror, Conway, Lee, Murphy, fucking James Crime. I can't believe that you haven't even said anything. I can't believe you haven't even said, this is what the fans would not want this. You're part of the consortium, you own 20% of the club, why are you not saying anything? Why are you not going up to them and having an influence and a say? You know the club, you know the town, your father knew the club, he run the club, you know what it meant to us, you know what this club means to us. I'm not having this fucking consortium killing my fucking football club. That's what they're fucking doing. It I'll go with this message. From now on, if Stendhal leaves, I'm going to boycott all home games. I'm not putting no money into the club for home tickets. I'll give my ticket away. I'll go to away games. But I'm not putting no more money into this football club until they leave. I'm not trying to be somebody that's like, controversial, outspoken, obviously I am outspoken, but I'm not trying to be somebody that's doing it for a reaction, to a, for attention. I'm doing it for principle. I am not having people at my football club that have been alienating the fans, using our fucking coach as bait, using our players as profit. I'm not having it. I'm not having players being sold under from under us. I'm not having you saying that this is a successful season. Because all you care about is money. All you care about is money. And I can see fucking straight through you. If one of other fans can't and it takes them a while to see, then that's their choice. And if they decide to go to the home games, that's their choice. But I'm boycotting your home games. I'm not watching a Barnsley game until you leave the football club. I'll go to the away games, by all means. And I'll still support the players. This is nothing to do with the players. This is nothing to do with the fact that I don't love this club. I love this club more than anything. It's a heartbeat inside me. It's a passion. Fans that support football clubs, it's a passion. I've supported this club since 1993. I saw it go through with the bad days. There's been a lot of bad days since that time. I've seen it go through the good days. But in none of that time have I seen a pair of criminals cr criminalising Deceitful behaviour. Lying. Selling as best plays for profit. It's all a fucking toy to you, innit? It's all a fucking toy. And when you leave, I'll be glad. 
and you can pack your bags and fuck off back to America and ruin another fucking football club. I gave you a chance. I gave you two chances. I gave you a chance to support Stendhal. You didn't do it. I gave you a chance to help us get players and you didn't do it. You lie to Luke, who runs the channel, on video, and I hope people watch that video back when they did an interview with you. He asked, you dear promise that every player if we sell him will reinvest every penny. He said it also in media reports. So if any fans say that they never reinvested, Conway's quoted it, that they will reinvest every single penny, and they haven't done that, they've lied. It's all a smoke and mirrors effect to keep the fans on side. Who are you going to bring in now? Who are you going to bring in? Who's going to come to want to come to manage the football club under your policy? A third rate fucking Portuguese manager again? That we've never heard of, that we're a corn boy. Is that what you're going to bring in? A League Two manager that's out of his depth, that hasn't, that's not going to bring in the players. It's a fucking disgrace. And until you come out with a reason why, I'm not watching that football club again whilst you're in charge. And it guts me to say that, but that's the way that it is. And I'm making a stand. And Daniel Stendhal, good luck with your career, mate. You've worked wonders with fucking nothing. And I wish you the best for your career. And you're a top guy. See you later.